Welcome back to the Crochet Credits. Also, my friends at yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're going to learn how to do the crochet welt stitch. And so, this is almost an identical look to doing knitting. So, knitting, you have this relief of doing um, the purl stitch, plus then you also have the knit stitch, which creates this particular look. So, this is the same kind of concept, but done in crochet. I just changed color just to show you what it would look like if you change color. If you were to change color, you would do two rows of the same color and then switch back, and then you could leave it out on the edge. So, one thing I did notice is that you see how it's kind of buckling a bit? That's caused for one of the areas of the stitch work here. And so, I'm going to recommend that you use two sides two sizes of crochet hook. You can do a uh, five millimeter size H crochet hook and then just use a six millimeter size J crochet hook. And so what happens here is that we use slip stitching in order to create this stitch. And for me, I always am tight when I slip stitch. So I want to increase my hook size in order to compensate for my own uh, issues that I have. So let's get started with the welt stitch in rows. The welt stitch in rows is a one-sided pattern. Do you see the buckle? That's because of my slip stitching that I did. So the other side will look just like this. So it's very much striped on the back. So this is one of those items where it doesn't have a lot of stretch to it, not like the hat. The hat, when you do the concept, it actually has a lot of play. So what I want to do is choose the hook that I want the main project to be in. So I'm going to do it the five millimeters I mentioned, and I'm just gonna use some um, just fun yarn to be able to play with. So let's begin that next. There are no multiples for this particular stitch, so you can chain as many as you want without having to count. You can just lay this down on something if you want to match a size, but the sizing really doesn't matter as far as the chain. So please do that and I'll be right back. So what we need to do to go back on the chain is to do an extended half double crochet. To do that, go second chain from the hook. I always like getting the back hump, yarn over in the second um, chain from the hook, pull through, and normally with half double crochet, you will pull through all three. In this case, you're only gonna pull through one and now pull through all three. And that's an extended half double crochet. So what I'm going to say to you is that this half double crochet is the first stitch of the row. So ignore that uh, one chain that we skipped. So you're gonna work across your chain, just yarn over, going into the next chain, pull through, pull through just one, and then pull through all three. And I need you to do that all the way across your chain. And I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm going all the way to the end, doing the extended half double crochet, and then I'm good to go, done. So let's talk about the anatomy of half double crochet. When you're looking at half double crochet from the front end, what you're not seeing on the back is a back bar. So usually when you do the camel stitch in rounds, you're using the back bar and it flips over these two to make it look like it's knitting. So if you rotate this around, you're going to see another row and that is going to be the back bar, which is where we're going to be playing next. So let's just turn our work and let's figure out where that is. The first step you're going to want to do is to remove the crochet hook and go to the bigger size. In my case, it's size J, six millimeter. I want to chain one. So when we turn this over like this, you can see the top of the stitch right here, the first two of the strands. But what I want to do is pay attention to the next strand that's right here. It's called the, the back bar or the, the horizontal bar. And we are just going to go into that horizontal bar, just go straight up. Once you collect the first one, the rest of them are gonna be very easy to see. And you're just gonna yarn over and pull through and through. And by using a bigger hook like this is that you're making the stitch work a little bit looser. So now you're going to go to the next bar. So you just kind of glide through and pick it up. And you're just slip stitching on the, the horizontal bar. So when you turn it over, what it's doing is it's turning the top of this over in front. So this is the good side of the work. So going to your next one and you just pull through and through. Make sure you shove this all the way down your shaft in order to get the, the right thickness that you need in order to do the slip stitching. So if you keep it to the throat, it doesn't get to the amount of um, space that you need. So you're just gonna use the horizontal bar and slip stitch all the way across and I'll see you at the end of the row in a moment. What you have to do to start is that you're just gonna chain one and that will just be a builder. And do you see this here? This is your first stitch, but you're gonna wanna turn it and this is your slip stitching and you want only the back loop only of that slip stitch that you did. And so you're just gonna yarn over and going into the back loop only, and you're doing an extended half double crochet. So you're just gonna pull through, pull through one, 
loop only, and then pull through the three. And so you're doing what you already did before. And this is creating that gapping space that is existing between this. So this is a raised look. So to do the next one, just yarn over and just lean it forward like this so that you can see the back loop of the next slip stitch. Pull through, pull through one, and then pull through all three. So yarn over, go into the next back loop. And so you're playing on the slip stitch line. And this is giving the texture some relief in order to create the gappings that you need that, that I showed you before. So go all the way through on your slip stitch row and do these extended half double crochets right to the end and I'll see you at the end in a moment. I'm coming all the way to the other side and you gotta make sure you get right into that last stitch, which is right there. Okay, and you start are using the back loop of that and that's your last one. So I've never, I've never really done the half double crochet and extended before, so it's a little bit of a challenge, but you can see you've just now created a raised ridge. And so when you turn your hook or your project around, switch out your hook again to the bigger one, chain one, and let's talk about what we're gonna do next. So it's exactly what I already showed you. So you wanna use the horizontal bar. So if you look at the top of the stitch, there's one, two, it's the third one right here and you are just going to slip stitch. Once you get the first one, the rest of them pretty much are easy to see. So it's right there. Just glide it up and don't forget to shove down the shaft. And so you're just slip stitching yourself all the way across. Please do that and I'll see you at the end of the row in a moment. So I'm just slip stitching across and I wanna make sure I'm not missing that very last one. It's a little bit deceptive on missing that last one, so make sure you don't do it. So you think, well, that's the last one. It's not, it's right here. So make sure that you get that right to the end. If you want to count your stitches, if it makes your life easier, then by all means do it. Once you have that done, turn your work. See, and you've created the relief, switch out and start all over again. So just chain one and then starting in the back loop of the slip stitch line. You can just turn it so you can see it. It's right there. This reminds me a lot of the thermal stitch. So pull through, pull through one, and then pull through everything. And so this here is how to do the weld stitch. And I'll see you at the end of the line in a moment. So I'm coming all the way to the other side. So you can do those two rows over and over and over until the cows come home or whatever time that you feel like it. Don't forget that very last one. And if you're ever ending the project, I would end on this particular row so that you kind of have the indentation going uh, into this and then the indentation coming out of it. So you can see it looks really cool. So this is the weld stitch done in rows.